But you know, because of his name alone, and he did have a down year last year, I do think he's going to get some looks. Looks. I think his I think his agent right now is salivating at the prospect. I'm not going to say he's getting big money out there, but I think there's enough cornerback star teams out there that the numbers will be bumped up a little bit higher than they're anticipating right now. All right, so hey, did you guys see this? James Bradbury got released by the Giants, and yeah, I know yeah. he's been a target of affection for a lot of Eagles fans. I know a lot of a lot of our friends on the stream. That's why uh, we won't get him. Yes, you're, you know, reacting, yeah, but uh, yeah. you know, look, it's it's a possibility. I'm still getting killed, Kevin. <laughs> you know, everybody's just just digging it. I I like it. Um, I, he didn't have a good year last year. Really? You know, that's one thing to keep in mind. There's a reason why the Giants are okay with with letting him go here in addition to his, you know, salary. Um, look, you get him at the right number. He's absolutely worth a look as far as I'm concerned. Well, you know what? I, I stopped that a long time ago. And what I mean by that, I stopped thinking about the right number because they're going to spend what they want to spend regardless. Yeah. Now, will he be an upgrade? He'll be an upgrade if he does come. Yeah. Will they spend the money? Nope. I doubt seriously, unless he gives them a, a discount and, I don't know if he necessarily has to mm-hmm. give him a discount, but if it's, I mean, he might, they might fluke up and find a way to get him signed like they signed Nelson. Right. You know, but, you know, these prove it deals, you know, the Eagles have gotten away with this for the past three years. Yeah. They can do it again. Longer you know, than so that. Big. Yeah. So I, I can't see, I can't see him coming. You know, he's, he's, regardless about how he played last year, he played, he played, still played better than most of our DBs. Right. But, you know, See, he didn't have a pass rush that, you know, or to help him out. You know, there's, there's a lot of different factors in what he, why he played bad mm-hmm. last year. Mm-hmm. See, to me, anytime a team that's devoid of talent in a lot of areas, like the Giants, let go a player of the caliber of a Bradbury, that's a red flag to me. Why are you letting him go? You need, you need secondary personnel. You have new personnel coming in, but – you need guys like a Bradbury to help pave the way for these younger guys. So you could always restructure a contract, you know, get him down to get his number reduced. Why would you just flat out release him like that? That's my concern. I think the reason why they did that. Yeah. I think they're in rebuild mode. Okay. The way the draft went. Yeah. And, you know, with the new coach, they ball and all that. I yeah. think they're in rebuild mode, and he. I think he's a guy that didn't necessarily fit the culture of, of, of what they're doing in New York now. Uh, all right, so a couple things on him, right? So he was a 2020 Pro Bowler. Uh, he started 31 games in two years from him. He's only 28. He joined them as a free agent two years ago. He played his first four years in Carolina. He only missed one game with the Giants, uh, and that was he was on the reserve COVID list. Started every game in which he played for the Giants, you know, et cetera, et cetera. 82 career uh, passes defended, uh, led each team he's been on in, in, in six years, whatever. But he definitely had a down year. He, you know, he, he was not the same guy. 47 tackles. He did have four picks last season, which was tied for fourth, 17 pass defenses. Um, but he was better in, in the previous years before that when he was more of a Pro Bowl caliber guy. I mean, he's still still 28. Yeah, I, I think Barrett, some of this is going to be go play the field, man, see what you get. And if you can get him on the cheap, perhaps he's an eagle. That's the that's the way I look at it. Absolutely. And um, it, the way it's, this is that awkward time of year where you can probably get a good deal because everybody else is, you know, kind of sh- trimming their rosters down. I mean, just to go into camp, you get 90 going into camp mm-hmm. and really you don't see what your guys can give you. Um during you know OTAs, if they have mandatory OTAs, we don't have mandatory OTAs, so I don't I don't know how they're going to do that or go about making that decision. But um, you know, maybe they do. Maybe he doesn't get any traction up until the same way they did Nelson a week before camp. Yeah, and he gave up by uh, the way eight <clears throat> eight passing TDs last year, yeah. guys, and seven hundred twenty nine oh. yards. That's from uh, Jeff Carr, CBS, yeah. uh, yeah. the show. 
That's that's a lot, man. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. But you know, because of his name alone, and he did have a down year last year, I do think he's going to get some looks. Looks. I think his I think his agent right now is salivating at the prospect. I'm not going to say he's getting big money out there, but I think there's enough cornerback star of teams out there that the numbers will be bumped up a little bit higher than they're anticipating right now. Won't be big money, but it might be better better than. See, you know, when we talked about this a few weeks ago, when I brought up the names in a list on the draft special show that we had and right here on Sports Take, when I started reading off the names like Trey Wayne, stuff like that, you know, there's a certain category of guys that will get a little bit more just because of their name and so-called pedigree that they've been in the league for a while. And James Bradbury falls in that category. So if I'm his agent from a strategic standpoint, you know, I like, uh, you know, hey, I'm telling my client, hey, look, man. You're not going to get the money you made with the Giants. But there are enough teams out there, after talking around the people in the league, uh, teams in the league, there's enough people out there to pique your interest. And it might put you in a situation, a winning situation, where we're going to get a little bit more than what we thought to where you can save face with this. I mean, look, that makes sense. Here, I'll give you the finances for this thing and why the Giants did it here. So – they're going to create 10.1 million in cap savings. They're leaving an 11.7 dead money hit. So the savings mm. for them is going to be 11.5 with a 10.4 dead hit this year, 1.4 million in dead in 2023. You know, I, I don't want to get in too deep in, in the weeds here with the money, but there's, right. there's reasons why they needed to clear that up. And he, he struggled. That, you know, that's the, the problem too, is sometimes you're right, Derek. It, it's a slippery slope when you're on a bad team. Right, the first right. three, your first reaction is, why is a bad team releasing a guy if he's so good? Like, what's going yeah, on there? Yeah. But you yeah. also say to yourself, man, what were the circumstances? What was going on? How was the pass rush? How were the guys around him? Like, what was right. happening in front of him? It's a team sport. So I, you know, I think you really need, if you're the Eagles, to dig in on the film and just look at what he's got left. I mean, some guys hit that wall early. He's only 28, but who knows? It's a tough position to play in that league for sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah no question about it. Um. And, you know, obviously new coach, new identity, new mindset in the locker room. And, you know, you're right, Barrett. Maybe he didn't fit the culture. But I would also say, you know, when, when we talk – and we talk about this all the time. How can a coach determine whether or not a player fits your culture when you've had him such a short period of time? It's one thing to sit down across from him and talk about X's and O's and strategy. It's another thing to see how he performs – on the field is he the type of veteran guy that I want my young guys are looking up to and going to for questions and answers, um, you know, in, ter in terms of their head swimming right now, trying to learn this new system. Um, what kind of guy is he in our, in a community? Do, will he serve per the, the, the better interests of our person purpose um, out in the community or just as, you know, one of the so-called front men for our organization moving forward. You know, I've never heard anything negative, you know, to be honest about James Bradbury off the field, getting in trouble, uh, things like that. And it's always just fascinated me how when new coaches staffs come in and they get rid of veteran players, what do you determine on other than the fact that he might cost you too much money? You know, can you convert him to fit into your system? Can he be a mentor? There's more value than just being in a system to me in terms of a player. Can you help us out in terms of grooming younger players? Will you be a stand-up guy? Are you the consummate locker room guy? When things go bad, you're not going to be one of the guys who are openly talking negatively, negatively about what's going on within the structure of our organization. There are a lot of factors to consider, um, but like I said, it's always fascinated me how teams have determined this uh, as soon as they take over and, 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 and not even – all the way through an OTAs or a mini camp before you determine, okay, he's not a guy we want on this team. Well, you know, yeah, yeah go ahead, Doc. Well, you know, <clears throat> I've been a part of that situation a lot, man. Um, I remember when, when uh, I was in college and Coach Schneider, he had just got the job the year before. And, um, he, you know, he was running guys off. It got to my year and I got there. He started bringing his guys, and I was one of his guys. He was still trying to weed out the other guys and bringing in, you know, to become competitive. He bringing in, um, you know, guys from JUCOs. You know, that, that's a process in which, all right, you see this guy really yeah. isn't who you want to get him out of here. Uh, when I was with the Eagles, same thing. Um, Ray Rhodes uh, had just got the job there. So I was his first recruiting class, his first time being a head coach. 
and he wanted to bring his guys in. So a lot of guys he let go and and, and didn't bring back. And, you know, that that's one of those things where it's like, you know, all right, who's to say that, you know, a guy that's already like Calvin Johnson. I mean, not, not Calvin, um, Calvin, um, what was Calvin's name? He and um, Williams. Yeah. Calvin Williams, Calvin Williams, our two best receiver, Calvin Williams and, and uh, Fred Barnett. Mm-hmm. He didn't necessarily like Calvin Williams. Yeah. So yeah. he kind of phased Calvin out. He did like Fred Barnett though. Um, you know, but that's just, you know, he didn't like Anton Davis. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, you know, he he phased him out. You know, that's that's just what happens, you know, mm-hmm. with with organizations. So he might just be a casualty of, of a coach just not wanting him in there and wanting his guys uh, in there. That happens okay. a lot. Yeah, look, it makes a lot of sense. When you're inherited, all bets are off a lot of times. And you just don't right. know what's gonna happen if you aren't chosen by that administration or or you know, like the Look, Dable's in there. They have a new GM in there. There is a, there's a lot of changes going on there. Yeah. And, and, and it, by the way, they should be clearing house. They should be right. cleaning that thing out. <laughs> I mean, they were awful last right. year. So I'm not surprised. It's just, but this also saves them some money too on top of it. So it's going to be interesting to see how that it shakes out. No doubt about that. If you just. 